my Toro fleet is dying. Becoming a Toro host has admittedly become a lot more difficult over the last few years. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you the reasons on why I'm now rethinking my Toro business, if it's all been worth it, and what plays I'm considering now to try to get to the next level in my life. I've been renting vehicles on car sharing platforms for almost four years now. This includes having over 10 vehicles listed on platforms like Toro, Hire Car, and even renting some privately. But I've been doing this long enough to know that this business has its ups and downs, just like any other business as well. Today, I wanna make this video being fully transparent as usual and let you guys know, because you always tapped in with me, that in my car sharing business, lately I've just been dealing with a lot of back-to-back -back scenarios. I've grown a lot, but I've also had a lot of growing pains as well. With that being said, I'm actually rethinking my Toro business. All these situations back-to-back -back has forced me to think about if Toro is actually gonna be a part of my wealth creation strategy moving forward in my life. Now, before we get into the meat and potatoes of the video, let's address the elephant in the room. I know, I know bag chasers, it's been a minute since I dropped my last video. But when I tell y'all life been lifing, I really been having to lock back in from just losing focus, getting caught in the mix. I'm actually trying to make it a point to be even more transparent with you guys and keep giving you gems in regard to uh, business credit, car sharing, and just creating more streams of income but doing it, of course, in my way, in the bag chaser way. So just be prepared, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna tap in a little bit more, a little bit more closely as time goes on. As we get into this video, man, a lot of this grind and getting to the next level of life is gonna be about consistency. So, you know what I'm saying? It's time to tap in. But now let's actually get into some of these situations that has got me rethinking my whole Toro business. One of the latest ones actually involved my 2019 Honda Civic. And this one wasn't just a little accident. This guest actually totaled my entire vehicle. Not only did they total it, but it was a whole process to get the car back and somewhat still of a process going on right now. Now the thing with Toro and renting your car out to people is you never know what's going to happen and you never know when it's going to happen. So one day I'm at the gym getting to a bucket per usual and when I go to the sideline I check my phone and I had a long message from a guest that I was renting this car out to on Toro. But by the length of it as soon as I seen this message I already knew something was wrong. Now initially I rented this car out to a guy he did have an out-of-state license but on Toro, that's cool as long as it goes through uh, validation, they get checked and you can rent the car to them. One thing to note though, when we were going back and forth in the messages, he did slip up and say something about letting somebody else drive the vehicle. I didn't want to cancel a trip because it would have negatively impacted my ratings, but I did send a copy and pasted message directly from the Toro website that pretty much just states that renters who book the car are not allowed to let anyone else drive the car unless they're added as an additional driver. He said okay and just kept it pushing. So, you know, it was a little fishy, but nothing else I could really do if I wanted to get this back. Now back to when this guy reached out to me telling me that the vehicle was totaled. In this message, he said that he had let his girlfriend drive the car and she had gotten to the accident. At this point, she was in a hospital and he couldn't get a hold of her and he didn't know what was going on and he also didn't know where the car was at. This was definitely at like the top of the list as far as maybe most stressful situations when it comes to my car sharing business. The people who were driving this vehicle were a state over in Jersey. Mind you, I'm in Pennsylvania. As the guy said, his girlfriend or whoever this girl was had got into an accident. The county had now towed the vehicle because everybody went to the hospital. And therein lies the problem. Since I didn't know exactly where the car was, I didn't know where to tell Toro to go pick it up from. So for the next three to five days, I literally spent so much time trying to track down this car. Eventually what I had to do was get a hold of the county that the car got towed in and receive the information on where it was. But not only did I have to get that information, but I had to go to the actual county district police office to get a uh, sign out paper to get the car out the impound lot and see if there were any charges involved, which means I had to go to a completely different state to go to a police district. And when I got to the police district, they pretty much explained where the car was and what the charges were going to be and what I needed to do, which was go to a whole nother location of the impound lot, pay the fee and have them tow my car outside of the lot. When I got there, I can't say the process was pretty quick. All I had to do was go ahead and pay these expenses which came up to about $900 as far as storage fees. And yes, in my mind, you know, I did have to take a hit for about $1,000 to get my car out the impound lot. But if all went right, this is something that I can include into the invoice when 
I put in my damage claim with Toro against this runner. As soon as the tow truck driver brought my Honda Civic from out of the back, I already knew it was a wrap. The entire side was pushed in, all the airbags were out, windows were broken, it was just a mess. And when I put my damage claim in, there were some back and forth with the numbers, but I was able to get reimbursed for all of this damage, which essentially was paying off my car note and giving me the value of what this Honda Civic was worth. This was a car in my business name. I've had it since about 2019. I only owed about 13,000 on it, which essentially meant I was gonna get about $9,000 back, which when you think about it is pretty nice because you're getting a nice big check that you can kind of make some moves with. But ultimately I've had this vehicle for so long, the time and when I brought it, the interest rates were so low I mean, I probably had about a 3% interest rate on this vehicle to where when I need to go buy cars now using commercial financing, buying them in my business name, I'm getting a rate at about 8%. Literally, that can take a payment that was about $325 to over $500. So I will say this car sharing environment has gotten a bit tougher when it comes to buying cars, which is a big reason why, you know, even though I can get five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 when these vehicles get totaled, I'm not extremely happy because I got to go through the car buying process all again. Now, not only did this mean I was going to have to go back through the car buying process, but get this bag chasers. A few weeks after this accident, I actually went to go pick my mail up from my business office and I seen an all white envelope that looked like it was from a legal firm. Now me, some time passing, not even thinking about the accident, went to go open it up and guess what? This was literally a letter from a law firm in New Jersey. The person who got hit was not only suing the individuals who hit them, who were driving, but because I was the owner of the vehicle or my business is the owner of the vehicle, they were now actually trying to sue my business as well. Now I'm not gonna hold y'all, throughout all my years of renting cars on Toro and all of my experiences with accidents and things like that, this was definitely the first time that I ever received a lawsuit from someone who got hurt in one of the accidents with my renters. But per usual, did a little research, called up Toro, and they actually told me that this was going to be handled by Travelers, who is pretty much the insurer who covers all of Toro. Much like anything with Toro, this took a bunch of emailing back and forth. See, that's pretty much one of the most frustrating things when it comes to car sharing. Not only the accidents and the risk with the cars, but the back and forth logistics and the administration that you have to do behind the scenes. That's definitely one big part that a lot of people won't tell you about renting cars on Toro on here. Finally, I got a hold of somebody from Toro and the Travelers Insurance Agency. They took all the documents that were sent to me from this law firm and pretty much said that they were gonna handle everything, reach out to them and get that going. It's been a few months and I haven't heard anything back from Toro or Travelers. And I'll admit that, you know, this is definitely just another one of those things that has been stressing me out. But even with that said, once again, there are some laws out there that govern car sharing and car rentals as it comes to being able to sue the owners of the vehicle as opposed to the guests. I might be good here, but still super stressful and something nobody really feel like dealing with. And besides this situation with my Honda Civic, I also lost a few other vehicles that I was renting on other platforms like Hire Car and ones that I was renting privately. Now, not all of these vehicles got totaled. A lot of them were just at the end of their useful life which pretty much mean I needed to use an exit strategy like selling or just getting rid of them. Nonetheless, this still left me with three to four vehicles that I needed to replace within my fleet. But that's not even the end of it, bag chasers. Literally a few days before recording this video, I just got an email directly from Toro letting me know that my newest vehicle that I acquired, my 2020 Kia Telluride, was now being restricted on the platform due to a recent safety recall. So I'm just at a point where like, it just seems like it's one thing after the other. Now I can't get this Kia listed back on the platform until Kia actually releases a remedy for the recall, take it to the dealership, and then provide proof to Toro that everything has been fixed. I don't think Kia has yet released a remedy, so pretty much right now I'm still stuck with paying all the car expenses associated with this vehicle. And because it's kind of a newer model car, the car note on it is close to $700 plus the insurance. So it's definitely not something I'm trying to pay out of pocket if I don't have to. This long list of things that just keep happening to me in my Toro business, now I'm really just sitting with the decision if I truly wanna go out and grab three to five more cars and rescale the fleet, or do I wanna maybe rethink my decision with the Toro business as a whole being included in my wealth creation strategy. To be honest, right now, I don't know. I guess we're gonna have to see. And it just started pouring down raining. So we're gonna take it to the crib and discuss more what the next moves is gonna be for my Toro business. 
And yeah, I know you see those Toro gurus all on the internet talking about their cars, all their secret strategies, and probably trying to sell you a course. And that's cool. But to be honest, my plan was never to have a million dollar Toro business. Car sharing has definitely helped me make additional money on the side besides my nine to five. And over the last couple of years, I've been able to drive a bunch of different cars and never have to pay a car note or insurance or maintenance to that point. Now, over the last four years, I've done a bunch of other things as well. I've worked to build over $100,000 in business credit. I've built multiple other businesses that bring tens of thousands of dollars in annually, content creation and YouTube being one of them. And I've experienced and learned from a bunch of the ups and downs that come with entrepreneurship. Quite frankly, I'm just not in the same stage that I was when I first started getting into the car sharing business. At that point, I was working a nine to five and that was my only stream of income and I was pretty much living check to check. Now, as I talk about my transition as an entrepreneur and the growth from where I started, this brings me to a point that Toro doesn't have to be your end all be all when it comes to your money making strategies. And I've stressed this point and talked about this in so many of my past videos, is that Toro is a great way to start making some additional income and really start getting your feet wet and learning about entrepreneurship and doing things on your own besides your nine to five. But you can still have even more long-term goals in mind and use car sharing as a bridge to learn and start funding even bigger ideas. Personally, car sharing has not only made me additional income, but it has also allowed me to save more money as well from my nine to five because it's cut my expenses from my car note, my insurance and maintenance, which I've used all of this additional income to then start investing in real estate. To the point now, I have multiple cash flowing properties and I'm looking to go even bigger with my next real estate investment. With that being said, at this stage of my entrepreneurship journey, I've really been focused on and trying to figure out what my seven to eight figure business idea is gonna be. What I mean is I wanna start or invest in a business that can make millions and tens of millions of dollars as opposed to tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands. If you put the work in, you can definitely do five to six figures with Toro. But the question starts to rise, how much effort do you really wanna put into a car rental business and what are your long-term goals? As a car sharing host, once you get to about 10 to 20 cars, you really have to start reconsidering if you want to remain a Toro host or a car sharing platform host, or if you wanna go private to take advantage of higher profit margins. Going into the private car rental business can definitely have its downsides as well. Some of these things can include finding your own insurance and insuring your entire fleet, marketing and attracting new clients, as well as just the back-end logistics of actually running your business. These are all things that Toro took care of that when you go private, you're gonna pretty much have to do yourself. As for me, I've fallen in love with traveling the world over the last few years and running a private car rental business myself Definitely, definitely wouldn't, wouldn't fit, fit that, that type of that lifestyle. lifestyle. Now, something else I've thought about is actually giving my cars to someone else and allowing them to co-host it and partnering into a car sharing business, but that's just not something I'm 100% sold on yet as that presents you a lot of risk as well. And it's super ironic that as I'm going through all of these things with my car sharing business and rethinking my approach to Toro, a fellow car sharing YouTuber, Saima, has also recently made a video saying the same things. Pretty much that she's rethinking her strategy and doesn't know if she's gonna be doing Toro moving forward. Now, Saima was definitely someone that I watched a whole bunch when I first started car sharing and has helped me a lot with her own video. So to kind of see her take a step back and reanalyze what she's doing is definitely food for thought, but also shows me that I'm not alone in the things that I go through and that you don't gotta be tied down by a business and you can take on new opportunities as well. But even as I make all of those points to you, I'm still not 100% sure that I actually wanna stop running my Toro business. I've also been considering going out to get three to four more cars in my business name and scaling my fleet up really quickly so I can start rolling on Toro again. I mean, at this point, getting cars to scale up my fleet is super easy. And I know Toro like the back of my hand. If I did wanna go out and get a few more cars, I could definitely use the BOA commercial financing play and get up to four cars in my business name all at the same time. And not only that, but I could also use the business credit that I've accumulated up to this point including business credit cards and business line of credit to purchase cash cards from places like the auction and private sellers. And using a combination of all of those methods, I could easily see myself getting another five to 10 more cars within the next few months and getting back right into the Toro game. And not to mention without car sharing, my car related expenses definitely go way back up. 
Renting my cars on a Toro platform took care of car notes, car insurance, and all of my car maintenance. So if I were to stop my car sharing business, that means I would have to pay all those car related expenses out of pocket. And to be honest, I don't know if I'm trying to do that yet. All in all, when operated correctly, there's definitely money to be made in the car sharing industry. And I very well may continue to use that business income to fuel my real estate investments and buy time as I figure out my seven to eight figure business idea. Ultimately, if you're sitting there and you don't have any other income streams besides your nine to five, and you're looking to start a business and learn more about entrepreneurship as a whole, Toro is definitely still a play. Now, I would definitely recommend to do your research and know what you're doing before you start the business. But when you do, also leverage it to do things like build business credit and secure more banking relationships and invest your money and save your money as you continue to make more. Now that it's all out there and I've told you guys all about what I'm going through with my Toro business, let me know in the comments below what you guys would do in this same type of situation. Would you stick it out and rescale your Toro fleet? Or would you lock in on your other endeavors and try to make even more money with a different business? Hit them comments below and let me know what you would do, bag chasers. I definitely got some decisions to make when it comes to my Toro business. But if I do decide to keep growing it, at least I know getting cars in my business name is gonna be easier than ever. And that's because I know this one play. And that's called commercial financing. So if you wanna learn how to get multiple vehicles in your business name all at the same time, make sure you watch this video next.